Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And as of Friday, the 15th of October 2021, a new Game Maker beta has come out. And this one adds some particularly interesting feature, which I was actually not expecting to see added to Game Maker for a little while, but here we are. And that new feature is layer effects. So like all Game Maker features that I talk about while they're in beta, you do need to be using the beta IDE for this. In order to obtain that, you would log into your YoYo Games account, you would go to the Downloads tab, and you would go to the section that says Game Maker Studio 2 Beta. The IDE version that you need to be able to use this is 23.1.1.408 or later, and the runtime version that you need is 23.1.1.388 or later. If you are watching this video far in the future, after this update has made it to the stable version, uh, you need to be on 2.3.6 or later. So, layer effects. So if I run the game, this is just my base project, uh, my base 2D project that I like to about sometimes when I want to demo simple effects in Game Maker. We have a duck who's walking around the screen, we have some dogs who are also walking around the screen and can be talked to. Uh, this is composed of a few simple objects, uh, which as you can see right here, as well as a, a layer of tiles. There we go. Simple objects and a couple tiles. And... Uh, when it comes to layer effects, there is a new layer type in Game Maker in the room editor which you can select in addition to backgrounds, instances, tiles, and that sort of thing. Uh, you can click this button here with the magic wands to create a new effect layer. And when you first do that, it won't be super interesting, you'll just see the effects type... Cell phone... Right, where were we? So, effects layer. If you click the drop down, you can see a number of different effects. Let's go with the first one. This should be easy to understand. This is colorize. Uh, the effect is pretty straightforward. It tints the, uh, the layers beneath this effect layer to a specified color. You have control over that color. You can click the little, uh, the little box to open up this color picker. You can change it from the default of purplish to something like maybe red or green or something like that. Drag it down to white. I believe this just desaturates it. Uh, black and white and gray don't really have a uh, don't really have an effect on the on the on the color. Uh, you can also if I were to um, let's make it red because I think that looks cool. You can also uh, modify the intensity. So one is a hundred percent. This is a value between zero and one. If you were to set the intensity down to zero, uh, the color blending effect would be turned off. If you were to set it to something like zero point five, it would be about fifty percent. If you were to set it to one. Um, we would have a 100% um, uh, red tinted color. This could be useful if you want to tint the screen to a color, uh, as you can see like this. If you want to desaturate the entire screen, you could use a, a gray color like this. Um, I believe if you want something like a sapia tone, you would want to select... That's not quite it. Uh, I want to say sapia tone is somewhere around here. Like a, a burnt orange sort of, a, sort of color. Does alpha affect? Okay, alpha does not affect the uh, alpha does not affect the the blending color here. Just just the red, green, and blue. Anyway, this alone has a lot of potentially very useful um, uses in games. Uh, there's a bunch of other effects. I'm not going to go through all of them. This is an edge detection. Uh, this is something that I have done a fair amount of writing my own shaders for in Game Maker, in uh, in videos on this channel in the past. But this will be an edge detection effect. If I were to zoom in, uh, you would see that only the only the pixels on the edges are colorized. Uh, you can uh, you can see the blue line around the edge of the yellow duck. Uh, if I were to run the game, you would see that uh, obviously this works in game. I didn't actually run the game when I uh, when I set the colorize property. Um, let's see, this is apparently only uh, only applying to the um, to the background layer. It's interesting. See if Colorize does the same thing. Okay. I, uh, I would need to layer these differently if I wanted the effects to apply to... Um... Oh, you know why that is? That's because I'm using the depth equals negative y trick for, uh, for uh, depth sorting. So these effect layers are just applied to, um, to things in the room at a certain depth. If I were to move the duck all the way to the top of the screen, it should be, should be blended correctly. Like that, yeah. Um, if my uh, if my depth is greater than the um, or less than rather the y the uh, depth of the effect layer, then it won't be applied. Anyway, back to uh, back to the effects. 
Uh, I am not going to go through all of these. Desaturate. There is. Okay, so in addition to being able to use the colorize uh, layer to like gray or white or something, we also just have a straight up desaturate um, effect layer. Did not see that one when I was poking through this earlier. Uh, there's blur. Uh, blur effects are fun. This is a sort of frosty looking blur. This isn't just a straight up Gaussian blur. At least that's that's how it's appearing on the, um, the Game Maker IDE anyway. Um, let's see what, how this would look if I were, if I would run the game. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a nicer looking blur than uh, the regular Gaussian blur that I would usually write in a shader. I see that we have our own. Um, we have the ability to choose a um, a sprite to use as a noise texture. Okay, what happens? This is a terrible idea. What happens if I would like pick the like the duck and use that as the Okay, that just that doesn't really work at all. Using the the duck as like the blurring noise texture. That if anything that looks even worse. Okay, fine. Set it back to the default. Um that is uh that is this looks like it's multiplying by a color rather than uh, blending to a color. Slightly different colorization effect. Uh screen shake. This does exactly what you think it will. Uh, screen shake can be fun. I said I wasn't going to go through all these effects, but I kind of want to now because a lot of these are quite fun. Uh, we have screen shake being applied to the background layer. We have um, we have some some values that affect things like the shake magnitude. If I were to lower this, the screen would only be shaking a little bit. Uh, the shake speed. If I were to increase this, we would have a much faster vibration. If I were to make this too high, you'd probably be getting rather motion sick. Uh, there's also a noise texture that you can use for the screen shake effect too, which is interesting. Usually I see when people do a shader-based screen, sh screen shake effect, they're just, um, they write their own PRNG in the shader. But I guess, uh, I guess having a noise texture does make sense for that. Uh, what else? Posterize, I think, is a particularly fun one. Uh, this is... Posterize effects can be a little bit hard to describe. Uh, we're essentially rounding the number of colors that we have, or we're essentially reducing the amount of colors that we have. Um, if I were to set this color level value to something lower like 2, it might become a little bit more obvious what this does. Uh, you can see when I do this, we have not very many colors at all in the, um, in the game. Uh, you might consider doing something like this to uh, maybe emulate a 16-bit graphics style. Although, um, I'm not sure if I actually like it for that purpose. Anyway, it's an interesting effect. If you like this effect, uh, certainly feel free to play around with it. If I were to increase the color levels amount, we have a little bit more of a of a blur, but a little bit, a lot closer to the original colors uh, versus if I were to just turn this off to begin with. You know what? Is this duck spread just like blurry on its own? Hang on. Huh? I just uh, I just I just exited the tab and returned, and the ducks is no longer blurry. Anyway. These are effect layers. Uh, certainly feel free to play around with these and add effects such as colorizing your background layer or doing other things like that. There are a number of questions that people have about effect layers so far that have yet to be answered because as of my recording this, this feature is this morning years old. Uh, probably the first question that people are asking is, can you add your own effects um, to the effects layer type dropdown over here? And the answer to that is not currently, but I strongly suspect that you will be able to in the future. Um, if you were to open up a new Windows Explorer window, and if you were to go into the folder where the Game Maker runtime is located, so on Windows that would be Program Data Game Maker Studio 2 Beta in my case, uh, the Cache folder, Runtimes, Runtime, whatever the current runtime is, uh, go into the bin file and you will see, I don't know how familiar you all are with the, um, the runtime folder in the Game Maker installation, uh, but there's a new folder in this runtime called Filters and Effects, and if you click on that, you can see um, you can see information pertaining to each of the uh, each of the effects that you can uh, that you can set to a layer. Uh, there's a few things that you find inside each of these folders. One is, for example, uh, this is Filter Pixelate. Uh, in this folder, you will find a file called FilterPixelate.fxb. I do not know exactly what this what this file is. I, it's some sort of binary file. I strongly suspect that this is the uh, the shader code, the compiled shader code that runs inside the Game Maker IDE. You can see some things inside it like um, HLSL shader compiler and uh, PS30, which is the uh, the pixel shader 
model and uh, some other things like that. I'm pretty sure this is the compiled shader code for your, um, for the IDE. And then on top of that, inside the project folder, inside each of these effect folders, you can see a few things. You can see a uh, YYP, which is a game maker project file. Uh, you can see shaders. And this, uh, again, this mirrors the project directory of just a game maker project. You have filter pixelate shader .yy. This is just a little bit of meta information about uh, each of the uh, each of the shaders. This is something very similar to what you'll find for any game maker resource, and you will also find uh, filter pixelate shader .vsh, which is the vertex shader, which in this case is basically just a pass through vertex shader. Very similar to what you would get if you just created an empty shader, uh, minus the um, uh, the color varying, as well as filter pixelate shader .fsh, which is the fragment shader. And can I set the language to this to GLSL? Uh, I cannot. Notepad++ by default does not have GLSL as a language. VS Code to the rescue, I guess. Anyway, this is just some GLSL code, uh, which will apply the pixelate effect. This has some implications. Uh, probably the most interesting one to me being that I, like I said, I strongly suspect that at some time in the future it will be possible to define your own um, effect layers inside um, inside Game Maker, inside the IDE. Feel free to speculate on that all you want. And also, if you want to use the shader code inside a shader of your own, uh, you can, of course, go into the uh, f into the filters and effects folder inside the Game Maker runtime, and you can just use the shader code and, uh, and adapt it to suit your needs. Thirdly, uh, you can modify these, uh, these filter effects through code. If I were to go into just some code editor somewhere, let me go into the, uh, the parent object. You may notice if you started typing some code that a few new functions have appeared in GameMaker, such as fx underscore create, um, as well as a couple other effect related functions, fx underscore uh, get name, get parameter, get parameter names, that sort of thing. Uh, we also have some pertaining to layers. So you can say layer, I believe it is set FX. And this is a function that would apply uh, a, an effect such as one of these that you might create through one of these functions. Uh, this would apply it to a layer. And I believe there are some others. Layer FX. No, it might just be that one. Uh, there's also layer set FX and layer get FX, and also layer clear FX, which should be fairly obvious what it does. Uh, as of as of today, the 15th of October 2021, these functions are not documented. If you were to hit F1 on the function name and open the manual, or if you were to middle click on the function name and open the manual, uh, it would just open up to a blank page. It would just open up to the start page. If you were to type something like FX create into the search bar, uh, nothing would pop up. And this is somewhat unfortunate. This is a, to make a long story short, uh, Mr. Gapreet Singh, the technical writer for Yo-Yo Games, is currently on vacation and he was not able to apparently get the documentation for this up and running uh, before, he, uh, before he left for vacation. So it may be a week or so before we see documentation for these functions so that we can actually know how to use them. I would like to eventually make another video that's just dedicated to effect layers uh, set through code like this. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to either wait for the documentation to be finished or I'm going to have to wait for either me or someone else to be able to, to mess around with these and, and work out how they work for ourselves. One way or another, that's going to be another uh, a longer, more, more involved ordeal than just quickly uh, showing how effect layers work in the room editor. There has been some criticism, and I'm using the word criticism here loosely. There have been some comments made about effect layers um, in that you can technically do everything that you saw in this video already through the use of just applying a shader to a layer. But as you are hopefully able to see in this video, um, applying an effect like this through an effect layer is considerably easier than writing a shader and setting the shader to the layer through code. And especially I think for users of GameMaker who would not consider this themselves power users and do not want to spend a lot of time mucking through uh, shader code, uh, this is a very, a very fast, a very quick and dirty way of getting a nice looking effect up and running within, honestly within seconds, uh, pixelate. Can I set like the pixel radius for this? I can. So if you if, if you really want to if you really want to censor something in your game, you can uh, you can use the pixelate effect. 
I think colorize is honestly my favorite. I think the ability to to tint a screen to, to tint a um well the entire screen or a specific thing in the screen to a to a specific color is uh, quite nice. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you enjoy using effect layers and get a lot of mileage out of them. I am very interested to see where this will go in the future. I expect that this is a feature that a lot of people are going to be able to use in a lot of different ways. But that's it for me for now. I hope you all found that interesting. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Uh, no download this time. This is just the base project. Actually, I'll have a link to the uh, to this base project re repository in the video description if you want to download that and play around with effect layers. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, I will have links to that in all the usual places as well. You could see your name in the credits, you could hear your name shouted out at the end, you could see a, a preview of my future plans periodically. So if you want to pledge, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tower defense game. Sometimes more than that. I will see you all later. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Koyo, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.